okay we'll start the session today so so far we have like covered uh, uh, some of the examples of rest apis and we have like covered the major rest api examples and we'll see a few rest apis and then we are yet to see validations in our uh, project and also we are yet to see exception handling in our uh, project also we need to like cover uh, topics like uh, profiling how do you like uh, use different environments and uh, how do you like work when you have like different environments and you got to like point to different property files so we'll see those things and uh, once that is done we'll have uh, uh, we'll be writing some test cases to uh, uh, see how we can like write j unit test cases so we'll uh, start with a few more apis so let's say you have some requirement means uh, we were like work uh, uh, working on this employee management uh, feature so uh, as of now we have seen like how you can create an employee record how you can like fetch all the employees and how you can fetch a particular employee detail given that your requirement is like you need to fetch the details by the employee id and also uh, like how you can uh, remove an employee from the organization so let's say now we want to um, modify the details now let's say that uh, we want that some details of the employee get modified how do you uh, go for like modifying and what are the parameters that you think will be required for like modifying the details of the employee so think about this like modifying an employee detail is like um, means uh, making uh, some adjustments to the existing dto that is your data transfer object so let's say you have an employee record in the database and as of now we have seen that the employee record has three fields in the database like uh, we have employee id employee name and we have the employee age so now when we think of modifying the employee detail so when the requirement comes in like uh, to modify the employee detail how do you go for building the api contract so you know that if a, if you need to like modify the employee detail that must be an existing employee and in rest terminology we call that as a resource so whatever resource is existing we need to like modify that particular existing record so how do we do that in rest we basically use the spring rest uh, put api right so we have one put api and we'll use that put api to modify the details of the employee so we'll see how we can like go ahead so for that what are the things that you would be requiring so one thing is when you build your api contract about this you would definitely need the id because you uh, should not be like building the api contract that uh, you are like updating with the help of name means i whenever you write your rest apis most of the times you should be like having some kind of like unique identifier to uh, uh, hit your apis that will like ensure because if you like modify it with the if you search with the name and try to modify there might be like duplicate records there might be some uh, other employees records which you don't want to like modify so that's why you will need the employee id and also the payload the new payload which you are going to uh, which you want for the existing employee let's say our requirement is that we will modify the age of the employee so what are the things we'll do we will require the um, uh, age, uh, we will require the employee id and we will require the employee age and we will pass the request to the uh, controller in the form of let's say we can pass the request in the form of a path variable and that id can be passed as a 
path variable and we will take the age in the form of uh, we'll take the age in the form of the a request body we have the employee DTO already created the data transfer object right we will utilize that so let me try to build this rest API so it would be a put mapping and we will provide the API contract so the let's say the URL is something like this employee slash and we will put a placeholder this placeholder will be replaced by the path variable we will see how we do this we have already done this in delete mapping in the when we wanted to remove an employee from the organization so we will utilize the same concept and we will write down our uh, controller method so the return type would be a response entity and let's say let's say if we name this as modify employee details and to resolve this uh, path variable we have seen that in the previous example also we have taken this path variable annotation right to resolve this placeholder we will again utilize the same so let's try to utilize the same let's keep a path variable and the value would be the value will be exactly the same whatever we have provided to the placeholder in the url so we will provide id and once we provide the id we need to provide a variable will which will hold this value so let's say this is like id and then we have to we have to pass a request body and we will take this employee class reference so let's try to build this api now again it would be the same thing that we would be calling our service uh, layer so for calling the service layer we have this employee service uh, employee service which is like injected into our controller so we will try to utilize this so what type of injection is this this is a property level dependency injection so far we have seen like all the three usage of dependency injection like this is an example of property level dependency injection and here in the service layer we have seen how this is a constructor level dependency injection and in the doll layer we saw that we had set setter level dependency injection that is we were utilizing a setter method for injecting our dependency so these are the three ways in which you can like inject your dependency we have already seen this and now we'll build this api so let's say we want to modify the employee details so employee service dot modify employee details and we will need to pass the two values like id and let's say employee object and for now we don't have this created we do not have the uh, method in the service layer created so we, we will have to create it so what let's suppose we have if our object is modified successfully what we do is we will return a status code of okay http status code dot okay so this would be our api contract this would be the structure of our api now what we are going to do is we are going to 
write down our service layer. So in the service layer, we will have to create this method modify employee details. So let's go ahead and try to create this. So if you hover over it, you will get this error that this method is not resolvable means it is not there until now and you will have to create the method. So you can just go over it and click on this. It will create this method for you. The editor will create the method for you. And once this method is created in this interface, this is our interface, right? So there must be some class which is implementing this interface. So that class has to provide the implementation for this abstract method. So that is what interface and class contract is, right? So sometimes uh, an interviewer might ask you, what is the contract between an interface and an uh, and a class? So you will basically have to say that the interface basically contains the abstract methods, which have just the prototype or the method uh, uh, method uh, signature, and there is a class which implements that particular interface so that class has to definitely provide the implementation of this abstract methods in the interface so as as of now this modify employee details method is not available in this service layer in this employee service impl and we are implementing this interface so the editor will give me an error that either you declare this class as abstract or implement this method. But if we declare our class as abstract, we are not going to like uh, create, an, uh, we are not going to like auto wire this or we are not going to like utilize this. So we'll have to implement this method. And once we implement this method, we have got our basic structure of this method. So Let's go ahead and try to write some code in this method. So we know that we'll have to like interact with the data layer now. So let's put down some logs as well. Oh, just a second. Okay. Okay, so we'll write down some log statements here. Logger dot info. Let's write down updating employee details. When you build your uh, project in any organization, you should only write the relevant logs. Uh, means irrelevant logs, you should not keep in your project that like makes the code look cluttered and there's like lot of logs if there are like unnecessary lot of logs that can like slow down your application as well so it's only means you have to keep logs because in case of like failure of the application if there is some issue you need to trace the logs so logs are necessary but try to like keep only the relevant logs so now our service layer needs to communicate with the data layer. So what we'll do, we will utilize this employee DAW. So this employee DAW basically is uh, an interface of the data layer. So we'll try to like utilize this. So employee DAW dot update. Uh, let's say we want to update the employee age. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to create a method like update employee h and okay update employee h. So in that case, what we'll do is we'll pass this id sorry this id and the employee 
employee object so this method is still not there in the data layer so we'll go ahead and try to create this anyone having issues in following this we have seen this uh, like in the previous APIs as well so I think it should be fine but uh, you can like ask any questions if you have as of now so I'll go ahead and try to create this method in the dollar and we have the prototype of the dollar created and we'll have to now provide the definition to this in the DAO IMPL so this DAO IMPL still does not have the implementation of this method the method that is there in the interface will have to provide the definition for that particular method so we'll go ahead and try to click on this we'll click on implement methods see it's the same thing at the service layer or at the DAO layer we are doing the same thing in the interface we are basically creating the signature of the method and in the implementation class we are providing the implementation so that is why we have like named the package as well similar to that like if you see the package structure it is like IMPL means there's a convention naming convention IMPL that means this is an implementation class yeah TJ that is fine means I got why we are passing the id but we'll keep this id as mandatory in the employee uh, class we might not even pass the entire object means we uh, let's say the employee contains id name and age for now we want to just pass the age so what we'll do we'll not pass the other two things like id and name because for then we'll need to like modify both the things means uh, there would be some ambiguity what we are trying to like modify let's say we are we can just pass whatever we need to modify in that employee uh, request body so we'll not pass the other fields we'll just pass the age which we need to modify so that is why id we definitely need to pass because that is a unique identifier and with which which we, we will try to write the queries if you try to like pass any other field in the path variable that will again cause ambiguity because names can be duplicates age can be duplicate means uh, there can be different employees as well having the same name so we'll pass this id okay so uh, now this dollar has to implement this method so let's try to go ahead and try to provide the implementation for this method so we have this update employee age so this is uh, which type of query we will be writing we will we'll be writing an update query so far I am not sure like how many people are like aware of like SQL queries but uh, see I would soon you like how we can like uh, write how we can like create a table right so creating a table is something like this this is the uh, this is the way in which you create the table and you basically use create table employee and then pass the fields which you need to uh, cre um, uh, create you need to provide the data type also and when you want to basically select anything then you can uh, do a query like select star from employee select star basically helps you select everything but if you want to like select particular fields you have to provide those particular fields similarly we have seen how we can insert data in a uh, insert data into a particular table so this is the query like insert into you will have to provide the table name and id name and age so these are the three fields which you want to provide values and these values like this question mark these are like placeholders this we will be passing dynamically at runtime so in uh, when you write it in your sql client what you can do something insert into employee id name and age values you can just provide the values i'll show you the example i think we are done something like this or yeah 
this is like one of the examples you can write a query like this now in this case uh, we, we had also seen the delete query right where we can delete so one more important catch do not just forget the where condition while writing a delete clause if you just do something like delete from employee and you do not write the where condition now what happens if i pass this where clause like where id equal to let's say one two three so only that particular record will will be deleted a lot of times means when people are like beginners in sql writing sql queries what they do they forget to like pass this where clause so if you just write down delete from employee it will wipe off the entire data in that particular table so do not do that do, do this you will end up losing all your data so this is an important catch you need to provide the where condition now let's try to go ahead and write the sql query for this so how our sql query would look like it would look something like this string query is equal to will need to use update query so how we basically write our update query is update employee employee is our table name and then what we'll do we need to use set keyword so set what which field are we trying to update which field we are basically trying to update so we are trying to update the employee age so what we'll try to do is set age is equal to something this placeholder must be resolved and where id is equal to something so we'll pass this age and id now to this query and how we'll pass we have seen that we utilize the help of this gdbc template and let's try to let's try to uh, pass the parameters to this gdbc template so it will be jdbc template dot update so as of now we have used like different jdbc methods like jdbc template dot query for querying all the records of the employees jdbc template to dot query for object if you want to query for a single object and for rest of the things like insertion deletion or updation we are using jdbc dot template dot update so we will pass this query and then we'll have to pass see now we have two fields to pass here we have two fields to pass here so first field is the age so we'll need to first provide the age and how we can get the age is will utilize the getter method of employee so employee dot get age and second parameter is we need to resolve this question mark and this question mark is basically for the id so we will pass the id over here now once we are done with this this method basically returns as a integer value so that integer value is basically let's say we have run this query and how many tables uh, how many records are there which got updated it returns that particular value so let's write something like this integer rows updated so this will be basically the number of rows which will be updated once you run this query so let's uh, write down some logger here some logs we'll try to like print out like number of rows updated
and this is it okay why are comp uh, this is like giving some error okay we don't have to provide this i think we should be good we have written our query and we have written the all the methods like service layer methods controller methods and the doll layer method for interacting let's see if we are able to execute this let's try to run our application so our application has started and let's try to hit this api okay so let's try to first see what are the different records that are present so see as of now we have like five records like with id1 id2 id3 id4 id5 let's say we want to modify this particular record and see we want to modify the age of sally the age is currently 24 let's say we want to make it as 26 and the id is 6 so let's write down the uh, let's uh, provide the payload so this would be a put method so you have to select this uh, rest api type from this drop down select this put and then try to like provide this api v1 slash employee and then you need to provide the id so id of sally was 6 and now what we need to do we need to provide the request body so for providing the request body or the payload what we do we go ahead and try to click on this body and then after that we click on this raw and then we click on this json and we'll try to provide the age in this json format so will provide the age so this is the key that we are going to modify age and the value was existing value was 24 let's make this as 26 so let's try to hit this api so i'm getting a 200 response so let's try to hit the rest api again this particular rest api and we'll try to like verify whether this particular record got updated the age should now be reflecting as 26 so this is our fetch api right so from this fetch api i can like verify what i have updated whether that is reflecting or not so let's try to verify this one okay see this this has updated right this age is updated for sally so this is what put api basically does it modifies your existing record sorry uh, tj can you like uh, clarify your question what if the client don't want response one in postman console for put method postman console response one what do you mean by response one no this is nothing one this is nothing like means this is not no this is this is not the response this is not the response it is simply something means this is not what client is this is not the output means it's simply like some line number that postman shows you this is nothing ignore that thing means this is your line number you see this right this is the line number that is not response ignore that thing this is the line number whenever you get the output right uh, means there are different line numbers which shows this thing yeah we can uh, like uh, provide some uh, description as well we we can provide some description that 
this is updated uh, there's no issue in that we can uh, provide the description as well for that we'll have to create some uh, DTO objects so we'll see that in validation and like exception handling let's say uh, let's say what we want to do we'll see some uh, some uh, things like some description while performing the validations and exception handling like let's say uh, your api uh, you are hitting an api it and you got some issues for now we are just showing the status code as 200 let's say uh, means it's like more evident in error scenarios like let's say your api is not providing you proper response and in that case what you want to do you want to like show some kind of error response means the client should be able to read from that api uh, api response that what is the error that you are facing so we'll see that thing let's say we will try to see those validations and how you basically go ahead with creating the api error codes or error error responses so we'll see those things and we'll write down some validations as well for our project so let's try to write down some validations yeah tj we'll cover that we'll try to like show some uh, api error response as well and that will be like custom means whatever you want to so we'll take down some examples when we start to write down the validations so everyone understood this put api anyone who has issues in this can ask now okay fine so let's try to write down some validations and for writing down the validations let's say when i now there is some constraint by the business that the business has set some requirements that you cannot enroll an employee into the organization if the employee's age is below 18 years means that person to be an employee to be enrolled in the organization you have that person has to be basically at least of 18 years of age so how do you validate that thing we'll see how we can validate thing so we will modify this we will modify this this api like our post api so we'll see how we can modify this api we want to put some validation in this as of now if you like provide any age even if you like provide the age as zero age as one age as two means it's like fine it your employee is getting registered but there has to be some constraints right let's try to put those constraints and those validations now we'll see how you can validate the data that you are getting from the client means the client can enter some wrong data as well right but you have to validate that data only if the data is valid you can go ahead with creating your uh, rest apis so let's try to uh, create a package where we will write uh, write down our validator we will write down a validator class let's term this package as validator and what we'll do is we will go to this validator package and we will create our class let's name these classes validator class and we will write down some methods here for validating the employees age so let's say okay one more thing this validator class has to be injected into our controller layer see in the controller layer we get the input from the client so we can validate this data here itself before passing it to the service layer such that we can throw any exception 
वी कैन थ्रो एनी रेस्पॉन्स और एक्सेप्शन इफ इट इज इफ द डेटा इज नॉट वैलिड सो लेट्स मेक दिस क्लास एस ए कॉम्पोनेंट सो दैट इट कैन बी इंजेक्टेड सो इफ योर क्लास हैज टू बी आइडेंटिफाइड एस ए बीन विच कैन बी इंजेक्टेड इन टू द क्लास वॉट यू कैन डू यू कैन यूज दिस एनोटेशन लाइक एट द रेट कॉम्पोनेंट सो एस सुन एस वी यूज दिस एट द रेट कॉम्पोनेंट दिस इज दिस क्लास इन द अप्लीकेशन कॉन्टेक्सट इज कंसिडर्ड एस ए स्प्रिंग बीन ओके विच कैन बी इंजेक्टेड इन टू द अदर क्लासेस नाउ विल्स राइट डाउन सम मेथड्स फॉर वैलिडेशन सो लेट्स राइट डाउन सम मेथड लेट्स राइट डाउन मेथड फॉर वैलिडेटिंग द एज सो पब्लिक बोलियन वैलिडेट एज and what we can do we can take something like integer age and what we can do we can return a boolean value if the age is 18 or greater than 18 means in that case we are we are fine we can go ahead and create the resource we can like enroll that employee in the organization so let's write down if age is greater than 18 or greater than equal to 18 we are fine and we will return true but if the age is like less than 18 so what we want to do we want to show the client that this is a bad request you need to provide proper request means this is bad data you need to provide a proper request means the age should be at least like 18 years or above so we will now see how we create that error response to the client means the client should be able to see that error response and the client has to know that this is not a valid record valid data that i am sending i need to like modify my data so we will so exactly like uh, we will so exactly like what error we need to error response we need to throw so we will throw an exception if the age is less than 18 years and we will write down our own custom exceptions so let's write down this new we will create our our own custom exception such that we are able to pass some meaningful message so let's write down some invalid input exception we have not created this exception as of now we will create it now so if you remember the class of exception handling in core java i have taught you how to create like your custom ex custom exception class means user defined exception classes so see java already provides many runtime exceptions and many compile time exceptions like input output exception sql exception your file not found exception these are the examples of like inbuilt java provided exceptions but if you want to write any custom exceptions like in, while you build your project right there will be lot of scenarios where you have to basically build your own exception handling mechanism so what we'll try to do is i am trying to create my own custom exception and let's say i have to pass some message to the client that employee has to be of minimum employee has to be of minimum 18 years to enroll in the organization minimum 18 years to be enrolled in the organization 
so we will this error response has to be shown to the uh, a client and the client also has to get some uh, error code we will send some error code as well to the client so if you want to like create this exception what we need to do is we need to create an exception class our own user defined custom exception class which we'll do for now and we will place all these custom exception classes in a new package let's name these packages exception so see these are some kind of like stand standard ma uh, naming conventions that you do for each layer for controller you will write down this controller package for data layer you can write down this DAW within DAW if you are if you have your implementation class you can keep those classes in this IMPL sub package and your all the data transfer objects are in this GTO your exception classes are in this exception then the class that you are writing for mapping the database records to the uh, data transfer object that you can keep in mapper in service layer in service package you basically write down the uh, business logic in validator you will be writing the code for validating so let's try to create this invalid input exception class okay so i'll go ahead and try to create a new class invalid input exception and we'll see how we can create this invalid input exception so to create this invalid input exception this class must be a child of the exception class if you remember when we created our own custom exception class in core java we went ahead with extending the exception so now what we want to do is we want to accept this message right this message must be accepted by this class when we create the object this is like if you like write down something like this new invalid input exception and pass this message that means it is calling the constructor right it is calling the constructor of that particular class and that that constructor basically has some string field string variable which will be accepting this message so what we need to do is we need to create a let's try to create a instance variable for accepting that message and we will go ahead and try to generate this constructor we will generate this constructor so public invalid okay i don't want to things why is so public invalid input exception and this accepts a string message and see since this is extending the exception parent what we want to do in exception class right in this exception class there is a method already uh, defined for handling the exception and that accepts a string type of parameter so what we can do is we can pass this message to the we can pass this message to the parent class that is our exception class so okay what is the issue okay okay uh, got it so this is our invalid input exception class we have created our custom exception class this is extending the parent exception class and this is accepting a parameter which will be used for showing the exceptions this will accept the message which we are passing from the validator it is giving me that i need to import this class let's import this class okay okay once you import this class right see now what error you are getting that you have to add exception to method signature 
either you can do two things whenever you throw any exception what you can do you can either like provide this in the method description like invalid input exception throws invalid input exception or what you can do you can write down the try and catch block which we have already seen where we were ha using the exception handling in the classes so let's try to like use this uh, uh, throws in the method signature is uh, itself throws invalid input exception so what we'll do now is our invalid input exception the error has gone it was throwing error because we had some error related to this class in some other class so that was throwing the error now this error has gone away but see for us to like show this message in the form of an error response we need to do some more things we need to create one error response object which will so some kind of like status code as well which will so some kind of status code as well we need to like so the status code and the error response so we'll do some more things we will have to create one error response object so this error response object will be shown to the client means we'll be showing one message and we will be showing one status code as well like 200 is for ok 400 is for bad record bad request so we'll show the error response as well so let's name this class as error response and we will keep it in the exception package itself because this is related to our exceptions means we are throwing some error response in case of exceptions so we'll keep it in this exceptions package itself and now what we need to do is we'll keep we'll build out our error response object so we, we will need the status code to be shown to the client so let's take this as an integer and we will need to show some message so let's keep this as a string message and what we need to do is we need to generate a constructor and we will generate one constructor and we will only keep the message because we need to show the message to the client and status code will be shown in the as part of the response so let's select this message and what we'll do is let's try to use the annotations so see there's one more annotation like at the rate data if you use this annotation right this is a lombok annotation so if you use this annotations it like generates your setters getters all those methods it will generate for you so this is like another annotation and let's try to use this no args constructor this is for default constructor and then this all args constructor this is for parameterized constructor so this is our error response object this is our error response object now see this is a exception handling mechanism that you can use at any layer i am trying to build that exception handling mechanism which you can throw it at validation layer which you can throw at any data layer as well or at service layer as well so try to like focus on this thing because this is one of the most important things and when you want to like throw some exceptions or some errors at any layer you will be needing this and once you understand one of the exception handling mechanisms it will be like bread and butter for you you it will be like very easy for you like to create those things but try to like understand one of the examples and then it will be very easy for you so we are building one error response object here and i'm 
keeping two fields status code and message here now what i want to do is like spring boot provides us with the spring boot provides us with some global exception handling mechanism so how you are basically going to handle any exception throughout your project so there are some annotations that you have to basically write so we will create one class for handling the exception globally and that let's name that class as global exception handler so i will show you the usage of some annotations so this is our global exception handler class so there's one annotation like controller advice if you use this that annotation what it does is it allows you to handle the exceptions globally within the project so that annotation will use it here we'll see how you can basically try to handle the exceptions globally at any layer so that annotation at the rate controller advice needs to be put at the class level see there are some annotations that we'll be using and that will basically like work internally to like build the things but if you like understand one of the exception handling mechanisms it will be like very easy for you to write down your own custom exceptions you cannot always rely on java exceptions means there there are like few exceptions uh, uh, like uh, the runtime exceptions and compile time but you your client or the business will definitely ask you in the requirement that if i am sending some bad request i need to see this particular proper message itself so there will be some requirement from the client that i need to exactly see this message on the browser that minimum age of the employee should be this much means that client can be naive right client can like enter any information so but you have to like handle those particular things at the code at your validation layer you need to handle those things and for validations you need to like write down proper exception handling as well so let's try to build our uh, exception handling method so we have to for this requirement we have to send one error response that minimum age of the employee must be 18 years and we have to send a bad request as well that this is not a proper request so we will like create one method public and we need to send some response as well so let's say public response body and to utilize this the uh, the uh, uh, return type of this method will be the error response that we created just now so let's send the error response as the return output and let's name this class as handle exception and we'll need to pass the type of exception that we want to throw so we have created our custom exception right invalid input exception invalid input exception must be passed here so let's try to pass and our return type is error response our return type is basically error response so in order to send our error response what we need to do is we need to create an object of the error response and error response required two fields right it requires basically two fields so we will send let's say http status code as bad request and we will send the bad request dot value so let's say see this is our status code and it provides a dot value such that you can like 
pass the value in the form of the response so you can utilize this for all the responses right if you want to like pass some other thing like uh, conflict we'll see this example as well like uh, what is the case of conflict so you can like pass the value as well so it has different methods so for now we will pass a bad request and we can pass the exception message as well ex dot get message we need to pass the message as well right in the error response we have created our instance variable for passing the message so we'll pass this message as well now we have created our method but how does spring boot know that this is our exception method so for that we will have to use one annotation if you use this exception handler annotation the spring boot automatically knows that this handle exception method is basically like for handling your exceptions and it can handle your exception globally and see what we need to like send the status as well so for that there is another annotation see it's all the game of annotations now you will have to write less code and a lot of annotations so there's something like response status so in the response status what you want to send is a bad request so let's send this bad request so now i think this method is created if you want to like write down any other methods any other um, uh, hand uh, error handling handling mechanism you can like write the same thing here and you can just change the exception type here and the status code here we'll see if you like are able to build this exception the rest of the exceptions right it will be like very easy so uh, let's see how much we have written okay our error response object is created which requires status code and the message and our global exception handler class is created and our custom exception is as well created and in the validator we have written this uh, method as well so let's see we will now validate in the controller layer we'll go to our controller layer and we'll validate certain things we'll validate the age of the uh, employee to be enrolled so let's go to our controller layer so this is our employee controller and we needed to validate before creating uh, this uh, before enrolling this employee right we need to validate the, uh, the error uh, sorry validate the employee age so for using that validator for using this validator we need to inject this in the uh, employee controller let's try to inject that particular validator here so how do we do that you choose the auto wired annotation and you need to create the validator so public validator let's provide some instance variable name and now you can use the methods what you have what you have created in the validator class so see this is one of the most important things like validations along with exception handling this is one of the most important things so try to focus on this so let's try to validate the employee age see now that method is already available to you why because you have injected that particular spring bean here spring component here right so you have injected that particular bean now let's see what you can do you have to validate the age so you will get it from the request body employee dot 
get age and that's it now you see, you can see that you are getting some error so what it is trying to say is you need to add some exception to your method signature so see what happens this method has thrown some exception and that this exception is now going to your controller method means this is called exception delegation whatever exception you got in validator your validator was called from your controller method right so whatever exception validator is sending now it has gone to your parent means whatever class has called it so it has gone to this particular method because the validator method was getting called from here and we are expecting an exception so we will have to handle this and we'll need to how we can handle this is we'll need to handle add the theme uh, add the same throws invalid input exception in the method level so let's try to add this to the method signature i think we should be good throws invalid input exception now let's try to go ahead and try to create a new try to uh, create a new employee in the organization let's try to restart our server so our employee management application is started now and what we'll do is we will try to create the employee let's say i am passing some id here and i am passing the age let's say i am passing the age as 10 in this case we should be accepting uh, 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 expecting some kind of error response that the employee must be of minimum 18 years of age that error response is required to be shown to the client so let's try to hit this see you're getting the error response now right you're getting the status code which is 400 and you're getting the message that employee has to be of minimum 18 years to be enrolled in the organization so this is how you send proper responses as well means you had seen the get responses like the 200 response that was like that was like expected response right means that was the expected response in case of if everything went fine but in case of any failure in case you want to show any error response what you need to do is you need to build your exception handling and you need to bind your error response along with the proper exception handling status code and status message now if the employee sees this right if the employee sees this the employee exactly knows that what error he has done what is the missing thing that he needs to fix in this particular payload the error response is quite clear and what you can do let's try to fix this now if you send proper response like uh, sorry if you uh, send uh, proper payload if you give the correct age i think we should be good to enroll the employee see now this uh, uh, employee is created now again let's try to create another employee with age less than seven uh, age less than 18 let's name this as matthew c we are again getting that error response so this was what i wanted to explain to you in case of like validation error you need to show proper error response to the client such that the client is now aware that this is the thing that the client needs to fix in the payload now we'll see one more e exception validation that uh, you can like try to fix let's say for now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create an employee with the same uh, let's say i'm passing the same id again 
I am trying to pass the same ID again and I am trying to uh, create the same record. So in that case, if the employee is already enrolled in the organization, you should be like forbidding that thing again, right? Means just in case if the employee is already enrolled in the organization, you should not be recreating that, right? So what we can do is we can try to like forbid that thing and let's say we want to uh, provide some validation around that means if an employee is already enrolled in the organization you should not re-enroll it means this is also one of the requirements from the business means if there's an employee which has been already enrolled you do not need to like enroll the client if that client goes ahead and tries to like uh, re-enroll that employee what error that client should get is that customer already exists you should not try to enroll that customer so what you can do to set this up so we will try to create another exception which we will throw in case of like enrolling a duplicate employee so see now we need to like verify from the data layer as well right if our employee is already there or not so we will write down a query to verify if the employee is already there if the employee is already there then we need to throw some exception so we will try to throw that exception so let's try to write down one method in the data layer where we will check if the employee is already existing so let's try to create one method which will return me a true or false based on if the employee is existing if the employee is already existing then we want a true value and if the employee does not exist in the organization then we are fine it returns a false value and when and then we go ahead and try to like create that employee so boolean employee exists and let's say we pass the id here and if you pass the id means we will fetch the id will uh, try to like fetch the record from the database and verify if that id is already existing so let's try to write down some queries in the database to verify if the employee is already existing now we have created the uh, method signature in our employee DAO. we need to basically go ahead and implement that method so let's try to implement this method so our method signature is ready and what we'll do is we will try to implement this so let's write down the query let's write down a simple query and we can like utilize the same query that we have written here we have written one select query right select id name age from employee where id is equal to this and we can like utilize the same thing fetch employee by id means what we are trying to do we are trying to like fetch from the database if our record is already existing so we can fetch with the help of id so we have seen this thing right fetch employee by id so we are using the same thing so i'll copy paste this code so now what i can do see this will return me an employee object or it will not return me an employee object there are two cases if the record exists it will return me an employee object if the record does not exist then this object will be null so let's see this if employee not equal to null i'm making some check condition if employee not equal to null that means the employee is already existing so what we can do is return true and if the employee is 
existing sorry if the employee is not existing then we can return a false and also one thing like when an employee is not existing in the database and you are trying to query for that particular employee means then the database will throw you some exception that data does not exist so there is some class in java to handle that particular exception and that exception is data access exception so that basically handles that particular exception so what you can try to do is try to wrap this particular piece of code in your uh, try block and in the catch block there if you write a try block you will have to write a catch block so what you can do is you can try to have this data access exception and you can try to print some stack trace e dot print stack trace now we have we have created a method for checking if the employee is already existing and what you can do is you can go ahead in your employee controller and you can uh, try to or what we can do is basically we can try to go ahead in the service layer we'll go to the service layer employees service impl and what we can check here is if the employee is already existing so let's say we are trying to register one employee or save one employee so before doing that what we'll just check we will make a check that if the employee is already existing we need not create that employee we need not create that record again because that will be a duplicate record so what we can do is if uh, employee do, dot employee exists and what we can do we can like pass the employee id here get id so we need to throw some kind of exception and what we can do is we can throw some kind of exception let's say we name this exception as customer already exists customer already exists exception so this is again one of the user defined exceptions and this is another validation scenario and what you need to like let's say we pass some meaningful messages here like customer already exists so but as of now we do not have this exception created right we do not have this exception created so we'll have to go ahead and try to create this exception so where do we exactly go ahead and try to create the exception we'll go to the exception package and in this exception package we will again do the same thing what we have done for the previous example like we wrote uh, we wrote one invalid input exception right so similarly we will create one more exception and it will be exactly same this you will have to write down the exact same thing here as well so we'll go ahead and try to create one string message which we will pass and what next we will do is we'll write down our parameterized constructor which takes a parameter as message and we are doing the same thing again so let's initialize this this dot message equal to message and super we need to pass this message to the parent constructor see this invalid input exception and this customer already exists exception it's exactly the same 
so that is why i am telling you now the exception handling all the scenarios will be similar if you want to handle any exception this you need to like create one user defined exception and you need to again add some logic to your global exception handler now you have like created one method for handling the bad request now see if this employee is already existing in the database it is not a bad request it is a case of conflict conflict means duplicate record so you will need to create another method now see what are the things you need to change just copy paste this thing and paste it here now you need to change this thing like the bad request must be changed to conflict and here what you need to change you need to change it from invalid input exception to customer already exists exception and okay and from this bad request you need to change it to conflict conflict dot value okay what error i am getting here why is this an error customer invalid input super string message what am i missing here okay um okay one more thing in employee service impl i need to import this oh one second okay we need to like pass this uh, we need to handle this exception here as well right employee uh, sorry customer already exists exception okay now we are we have done with this now let's see this okay let me try to just copy paste this in case i did some typo or something i have some issue in my register employee service layer throw new customer already exists exception customer already exists i think we should be good here extends throwable oh god i think i am missing something i have not extended the exception here my bad i have not extended the exception okay now it should be fine ex dot get message and what error i am getting here okay throw new throws add exception to the method signature so i have added that exception to the method signature means we have seen this right whenever you throw any exception you have to either handle that using your try catch block or you can handle that particular exception using this method signature now let me try to see if all the things are fixed now what 
extra did we do? We created a similar user defined exception like the invalid input exception. We created a customer already exists exception. And in the global exception handler, you added one method. And what you did, you just changed the status code and you uh, changed the error response values. Like now you need to send a conflict value and you need to send the new user defined exception that you have created so let's try to see if you are try once you try to create a duplicate record whether you are getting that error or not so okay see we are getting some uh, error again that we need to again add this exception to the method signature so let's try to add this to the method signature now we have added the exception to our register method as well we have added this customer already exists exception to the register method let's try to run our application okay our application has started and now what we want to do is let's try to pass some valid record let's try to pass some age 25 and see this id already exists in the database right this id already exists so let me try to hit the api if i am if this record already exists in the database in our organization if this employee already exists so it should throw me an error right customer already exists so okay why did it get created there must be some issue in the code then for it okay there is definitely some issue in the code okay mm. Employee service dot register employee. If employee dot dot employee exists, employee dot get ID through new customer already exists exception. Okay, employee dot save. Fetch employee by ID and employee exists. I think I'm doing it right. What is the thing that I'm missing? Select ID name age from employee where ID is equal to this. Okay, if employee not null, return true. Okay. Otherwise, return false. That is correct select id name age from employee where id is equal to this jdbc template dot query for object query new employee mapper and then the id how come this id got created again okay okay i think we oh i think i created it for the first time itself that particular id now let's see let's hit our API once again see this ID is ID 8 is already present ID 7 is present 6 is present let's try to create this record 7 Sally and 25 let's try to create this 7 Sally and 25 now I should I am expecting that I get this error response again. 
and customer already exists. C. Again, I am getting this error response. So this is a this is another validation scenario where the status code is 409 and this is a scenario of conflict that the customer already exists. So if the client now sees this error scenario, if he sees this error response, the client will understand that this customer is already existing. I need to modify my payload. So did you all understand this validation scenarios or not? If you have any questions, you can ask these questions right now. So what we have done for handling the validations and exceptions, we have written one validator for handling the client exceptions at the uh, input layer, that is the controller layer itself. Whatever data that the client is passing, if there is any data with that, if there is any issue with that particular data, you can throw the exception at the controller layer itself. And for that, I have marked this class, validator class, as a component. And I have injected this particular class in the, I have injected this spring bin in the employee controller. And I have utilized it for validating the age of the employee. In case the validation fails, I have created one user defined exception that is the invalid input exception and I have one string message which should be shown to the user in case of any error. And for handling the error response like this in the API, what we need to do is we need to create one error response object which takes two things like the status code and the message so this is exactly what error response object is being shown here right this error response object is being shown to the client this is the status code and this is the message and for understanding that how your spring boot would understand that the error response is basically an exception method so for that you will have to create one control uh, global exception handler class and you have to make this class as controller advice such that spring boot knows that now this is the class which is used for handling the exceptions globally and in your handle exception method you need to use two annotations one is the exception handler annotation and the response status so if you want to like send something like 400 bad request, you can send it like with the help of this bad request and uh, uh, bad request uh, status code. And you need to send the exception what you have created right away. Means you have created this invalid input exception, right? So you need to pass it here and you need to create the proper error response object such that that can be seen in the error response. So this way we have covered validations in your Spring Boot project and also we have seen how we can handle the exceptions. So this exception handling at any layer should be easy for you. You can try out by creating new scenarios and adding it uh, to your a project as well you can try to like think of any new scenarios let's say uh, means you want to like provide some validation that the id that you are sending to the payload must be like let's say below 100 you can provide some validation to that you can write your own custom exceptions custom validations and you can try to validate those data so I'll keep this class content until today. We'll conclude the class. If you have any questions, you can ask. Otherwise, we are done for today. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone.